Welcome to Red Bandana Gaming The channel where Logan will show you everything From gameplay to gear, their crew is here To take you on a journey through every atmosphere Releases to news, you don't have to choose Red Bandana Gaming is here for you Hey everybody, Logan here Today we're uh, doing uh, something we haven't done in months, and it's not because I haven't wanted to, it's because, well, we couldn't. So recently, with everything that's going on, well, for those of you who know, I do live in the state of Florida, things have been getting pretty bad here. So we really haven't been leaving the house much, but the other day, a Sunday, we decided to take a trip halfway upstate, a little less than halfway, about almost an hour and a half north, to go to a retro game store that I've used to frequent quite a bit on my way to Orlando and whatnot. Um, so we, we decided to mask up and make sure we put on our, our gloves and I love doing that. Uh, all of our hand sanitizer and everything. So we drove hour and a half up the street, uh, up the street upstate and went to a place that was, well, the last known play and trade anywhere that I know of. Also goes by the name of G3 on their receipts and stuff like that. They're in Jensen Beach. You can give them a, a look up online, but definitely uh, I'll drop their uh, uh, web address in the description. But they're the only play and trade or, well, it used to be play and trade. On the front of the building, it still says play and trade right on the top. So I hadn't been there in months, so we went. Things are starting to change over there. It's really cool. They have a, a lot of great measures in place to, you know, sanitation. You actually can't touch any of the games you have to ask for. It's really cool. But I did pick up a number of games while I was up there. So we're going to start with... Um, let's start with... They actually gave me some free games because they were sports games. Uh, for the Nintendo 64, and I'm just trying to flesh out the collection for those of you know. And there you go. We got... Now, I already did put my labels on the top, so they go. We got FIFA 64, uh, World Cup 98, NFL Quarterback Club 2000, Madden 99, and Madden 2002. All sports games. I don't really play sports games, but in order to complete the North American collection, you need the sports games so i'm roughly a little over 200 i think i think i'm sitting at about 200 uh in 64 games maybe i i have to double check the exact number but i'm still about 100 or so ways away i do have a number of uh duplicates which brings me to two more that i did purchase and these are duplicates as well, but I put them in the in the plastic protectors. That was the old EB sticker was on the box. Sadly, the boxes aren't in perfect condition. I actually got this one. I think twenty bucks. Uh, normally, it goes for much more, but the box isn't in the greatest of shape. But I do put them in these. It is nice to have. It really is hard to find in six four games in the box that are minty these days. And if you do, you're going to pay an arm and a leg. So the fact that I just happened to find this, I love Star Wars, I love Rogue Squadron, I had this when I was young, had to pick it up. Now, of course, this should be a no-brainer to most of you guys who've been watching the channel or know me. Direct 2, Seeds of Evil. Now, this isn't the, the fancy uh, hollow cover, but it is the textured one. So it is the black cartridge on the inside. Same thing, the box wasn't in the greatest of condition. So as you can see, inside it is a little bent. So this one he gave me for 25 because that one was uh, <laughs> technically much more expensive because with Turok's popularity lately and the releases, the remasters, the prices of these have gone up, especially the ones in the box. So these, like Turok, even if I find other copies that are still in the box in better condition, I'll still pick them up anyway just because I'm a huge Turok fan. So those two, two more N64 games. Yes, I already owned them. This one was the black cartridge. Uh, when I was young, I had the black cartridge for Two Rock 2. Now I had the gray one. So I decided to pick up the black cartridge. And then I asked if, uh, I saw this one, I asked if this one had the black cartridge. And the guy said, yeah. So I picked that one up. Next is, hey, 
Hey, look at that. Dead or Alive Paradise for the PSP. Some of you guys will, oh, you're kind of perfect. Well, screw you, I'm a dude. So, not gonna lie. <laughs> and I do have all the Dead or Alive uh, Extreme games, Extreme Beach Volleyball, Extreme 2, the one for the Switch, the one for the PS4, one for the PSP. I think I'm only missing one of the Japanese PS4 ones. Because they, well, they only, they were only Japanese, so I got all those. I think there's one Japanese one that I'm missing. Otherwise, I have the entire set. So, next, sadly, I don't have a case for this, but limited run within the next, I think on the 31st of this month, is coming out with replacement cases that I can buy, and I will be. And that's Alone in the Dark, One-Eyed Jack's Revenge. It was... $20. I got I got it for $17 because I had that card. So Sega Saturn. It's you know not perfect. It was it is it is in playable condition. So normally this goes for a little bit more than that. But I got it for $17. It has the book. Um, I'm looking to see if I can find a case or the back cover. I think I found one on eBay. Uh, if not, I think it was on Amazon. I can't remember. And it was pretty dirt cheap, so I'm either going to get that out, pick that up. If not, I will put one out online if I can find it. So, yeah, that was pretty nifty. Normally, I don't buy games without the cases like that. But uh, uh, I decided to say, what the heck, I don't have too many Saturn games, and Saturn games are really hard to get. Next one, Saturday Morning RPG from Limited Run. They had this. This one was 40 I think they gave it to me 35 So, yeah, that's pretty cool. I've never played it. I know of it. Uh, I heard a lot of good things about it. And this was before I started buying limited run stuff. So, uh, oh, shoot. Sorry. Sorry. Kick the dough. dough. Okay, we're good. So, yeah. Uh, when we go there, they seem to have somebody that trades in and sells a lot of these older limited run games. So, my wife has this affinity for buying those limited run games. I don't know why, but when it comes to the new limited run games, I buy those. I buy them from limited run, I do all those. So, this one, pretty nifty. I'm glad to pick that one up. This is the one she won, so that's actually going to go into her collection, even though I'm going to play it. These two are the crown jewels. Uh, yeah. For Dreamcast fans, for Sega fans... Uh, you guys know that the Dreamcast is getting pretty hard to collect for, just like the Sega Saturn. Prices are starting to go up. And the Japanese games are still a little less expensive than the American games. But, yeah. So, uh, Virtual On, Cyber Troopers. Or, this is just the Japanese version of uh, Virtual On. I do have the English version. I wanted this anyway. And I said, what the heck. This one was... Uh, 40, I got it for 35. Now this one. Legacy of Kane Soul Reaver. This one happened to be on like I saw it in the glass case, and normally this game goes around 50 bucks. I got it for freaking $35. I don't even have I originally had this for the PlayStation. I don't even have it for that anymore. And I just I had to. Look at this. Look at this baby. I mean, and yeah, the fact that they had it for that price, I had to put this in my collection. And yeah, so those two definite for Dreamcast fans, if you are, I am so glad to pick it up. I actually just ordered some new, uh, well, I shouldn't say new, more Dreamcast games uh, in the mail. And uh, I'll be doing a video on one of those and one of them I had a long time ago regret getting rid of it price spiked super hard to find i got it i found it i paid for it i ordered it so that'll be coming in i'll do a little video on that in the next uh coming days but until then there you go guys these are the games i picked up from the last known play and trade in anywhere if it's really can be called a play and trade but like i said the receipt here, I have the receipt next to me. I'll show you guys. Here, let's, let's make sure you can't see any of my other information. That's the receipt. And there you go. That's where it is. 
So if you guys are in the area, they are still open. They do have uh, limited hours, if I'm not mistaken. They do require a mask and all that. So stay, stay safe. Keep your sanitizers in your pockets. Keep your gloves and your mask on. You know, don't do anything foolish. Uh, you know, just just stay safe. But thank you guys for watching. If you haven't subscribed already, what are you doing? Just hit it. Visit us on our socials. You know what they are. Red Bandana Gaming on Facebook and Instagram. Our website, redbandanagaming.com and Twitter. RBG underscore retro. Thanks again. And hope you guys liked all this. Tell me what you think. And like we always say, be legendary. Thanks again. And again, the thumbnail. Okay, I'm done.